Well, hey, everybody. Uh, this is Steve over at Valley Vinyl. Um, lately, Beth over at B-Side Records has been doing these podcast-style type videos. So I thought, I like those. I do. Um, so I thought, what a better thing to do than to completely steal her idea and uh, also completely steal her graphics and artwork. Um, just add me to it because her podcast is called Dial V Vinyl. So I just decided to dial VV for Value Vinyl. Um, and lately she's talking about this positivity challenge. And uh, I'm all for positivity. Always have been, always will be. There's never enough positivity in the world. And it's crashing. Um, and there's 10 questions on there about this challenge. And I'm going to tell you right now, I was thinking of actually sitting, writing down some really whippy, quitty, quicky, quitty, whippy, quippy, quippy. Yeah. Funny things on these answers. But, you know, I'm not going to. I'm going to do this on one take. It's just going to be pure me because I think the answer to these questions should be what comes to you naturally and not something that's prepared and funny. Um, and so I'm just going to be me. And uh, if you like me, great. If you don't, don't. If you want to listen to this, great. I know for a fact that Beth's going to be listening to this. And uh, if she is, that's all I'm doing it for. Anybody else who wants to listen, bonus to you. Anyway. In this positivity challenge, there's 10 questions. And so I'm going to kind of go through them and come off the top of my head of what I uh, want to answer for these. It's pretty simple. You know, I'm not a smart guy, but, you know, I can figure this out. Question number one. Name three things that you are grateful for. Three things I'm grateful for. Um, right now I'm staring at uh, – chocolates and candies that are diabetic friendly. Uh, I do have blood sugar issues and right now every now and then I get I get that little, you know, sweet tooth and uh I can't have sweets. And if I just sat there and I had that in the back of my mind that I want to get something sweet and I can't have it, um there are some treats that don't affect my blood sugar that I can have one or two at a time and I'm grateful that science has come up with that. Science is a good thing, folks, as opposed to what a lot of people will tell you, you know, Global warming is a farce. And it was 130 degrees the other day in California. Um, science is, you know, real. Um, sorry that the Bible is making you believe differently. By the way, there's nowhere in the Bible where it says science is garbage. So I don't know which Bible you guys are reading. Um, <clears throat> you can still believe in evolution and believe in God at the same time. Can you believe that? Oh, great. Now you're getting the real me and learning politics and religion. I'm not going to get into that stuff. But anyway, so... Three things. Second thing I'm grateful for, uh, my job. I work... Hey, Mrs. Vivi, quit snoring. I'm trying to do a podcast here. Jeez, should have known better. You hear snoring, she's sleeping, but it's legit. It's early in the morning. She should be sleeping now. Um, but no, seriously, uh, I worked my whole life. I am a unique character. I uh, I could be difficult to work with just because I don't... I'm not as professional, and I don't think take things as seriously as I really should to be able to move up the ladder in corporate America. But I found a company that I work for that gets me, understands me, and knows that <clears throat> as long as they ask me to do A, and I do A and go above and beyond, and the customers love me, and all they have to do is just let me go, and I don't have to be supervised or managed, and all I do is bring in the money, that's all that matters. And my personality quirks and my weird little faux pas, they don't care, and... So I finally found a job that I can do that with. And if I lost this job, I don't know where I'd work. Um, so that's cool. And the third thing that I'm grateful for. Um, I'm grateful for a lot of things. You know, it's not one of these things like, I'm not grateful for anything. I can't think of nothing. It's which one do I pick specifically? Um, I'm grateful for the fact that, you know, and probably this is going to come up also, really, honestly, my whole life is my records and my vinyl community friends. That That's all I really have outside of work. I don't have tons of other things. So I am grateful for all the handfuls of people that watch my channel. Do I have tons of subscribers? No, I'm not looking for that. Matter of fact, if I had 20 subscribers and they were the 20 most awesome people that I know currently, I'd be happy with that. Uh I'm grateful for that communication because I'm not a go out and visit people kind of person. Uh, I do like to keep to myself. So I'm just grateful there's people that put up with me. Um, so thank you for putting up with me. Uh, something I like about myself is the second question. Uh, 
flying off the top of my head. See, I didn't prepare, which has its plus and it has its minuses. Maybe I should have. Maybe I'll do a second one of these where I actually prepare for it. Um, no, but, you know, that, that would take effort and I'm lazy. Okay, so, something I like about myself. Um, I don't care. And that's a good thing. I care about the things I need to care about. I care about you guys. I, I you know... But when it comes to people saying things online or being negative or I don't care. I don't let the drama bother me. I have really, and yes, it's narcissistic as all hell. I believe I am in many ways superior to the majority of the people on the planet. I honestly believe that the majority of humanity is stupid and they're unfixably stupid. And that's the thing. If you really think that humanity in general can change and that they're... You know, if you talk to them enough and you try to convince them enough, um, I've worked on it online every now and then. As a hobby, I like to go on Facebook and try to do stuff like that, just out of sheer boredom. Not because I really think I can convince dumb people to not be dumb. Uh, ask Rob over at Black Star Vinyl. I, I try really hard sometimes, just as a hobby. Not that I think it's really going to happen, but the fact that I don't care about those kind of things. Uh, I just care about the things I need to care about. And that, that's what I like about myself and I like to take pride in is that I don't let the drama affect me. Sometimes I stir up the drama just because I'm bored. You know, I'll, I'll say things like, uh, um, I cannot watch Vinyl Guru's channel because I think that she is disingenuous and not a human being that I could actually functionally communicate with in a meaningful way. And uh, I don't subscribe to her channel. Every now and then, like every month or two, I'll try to pop on the newest video and watch her. I'm like, my God, I see what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah, they, you're just not my kind of person. I, you, you could be some other people's kind of person, just not my kind of person. So, yeah, that kind of controversy. I'll just stir it up. Um, but it's, I really don't care. I'm not going to convince you to hate her. Um, every, because, you know, there's different people. They like different things. I get that. Um, so that's what I like about myself. I don't let things bother me. It bothers Mrs. VV because she thinks I should worry about things that I have a hard time worrying about. She sometimes calls me a psychopath or a sociopath because there will be a lot of things that I should be more empathetic about and I, I don't care. I, I, I don't. I just don't let it bother me. I have passion that I save for the things that I need to save that passion for. <sighs> Three, what makes me laugh? The most non sequitur things, I think, you know, things that are just, you know, for so long you see comedies and sitcoms and you see jokes, you see them set up. You see the punchline, you kind of know where it goes. But anytime I see a record or a meme or anything where, where it's just something comes out of the blue that makes no sense and it actually has no place, that shock value of, you know, it comes from out of nowhere. That's what I like. That's why I like collecting the records and the vinyl that's just bizarre. Like, you know, somebody really thought that was a good idea. That's where I find humor in the stuff that's just abstract and just out of the ordinary weird. Um, I like that. That's what makes me laugh the most. Uh, number four. Who do you love the most? Beth over at B-Side Records. Then Mrs. VV. Then Eric Weinbender. And then Red. And then Brie. Um, no, I, it's not in that order. I'm just making... See, I threw Eric Weinbender in there because he was non-sequitur. He's a great guy, I know, but why would I love him more than my daughter? <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, no, but see, seriously, uh, uh, who do I love the most? Of course, my family, more than anything. But outside my family, I love all you guys. I'm going to pander to everybody. I love everybody the same. You're like my children. I can't pick one. You're blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Um... You're snoring again. Okay. Anywho, number five, what do I do for fun? I am a simple man with a simple life. I'm going to be honest with you. That it, <laughs> other than work, it's the music. It's my records and now some CDs, but uh, fixing, restoring them. That's fun for me. Uh, getting a record that looks like complete ass bag, and when by the time it's done, it's been cleaned. Uh, I fixed the scratches. I've gotten it dewarped. I've made new, you know covers for it yeah that that gives me great satisfaction i do that for fun and so other than that i'm watching youtube videos there's my life i'm so boring number six six did i say sex freudian slip who inspires me um 
man, inspires. Somebody that does something, and I'm like, yeah, I wish to be more like them. Um, I could go to the VC, but that's pretty, you know, obvious. There's a lot of people in the VC that I, I inspire with, too. So I'm going to go outside the box and go somewhere that's not in the VC. And uh, that person is, if I think about this, hmm, ha, herm, herm, herm. See, I'm doing this off the cuff, and it's early in the morning. I haven't had my coffee, so I, I should have really pl planned this out better, but I don't do that. It takes effort. Um, somebody who inspires me. Inspires me, inspires me, inspires me, inspires. Um, Kyle Hill. Yeah, Kyle Hill. If you guys don't know Kyle Hill, he uh, used to be on the Nerdist Network, and uh, now he uh, has his own YouTube channel. Um, he is a really nice guy, really smart guy, and he teaches science. Um, and he's the best guy that I've seen in a long time that teaches science to the masses in a very palatable and digestible way. And I like the way that he's trying to educate the world about what reality really is and answering questions science-wise. And uh, he just got done talking. To, I just got done watching his video with uh, it being 130 degrees in California um, and why that is, and the science behind it, and how it's not crazy, and really it could not be global warming involved. It could just be because that's in, within the trend level and reality. And I like him. He he's a guy. Whenever I watch his videos, it's like, gosh, I wish I could have a personality like him and be smarter like him. So I'll say Kyle Hill. He inspires me. What is your positive affirmation? Um, I do say to myself um i don't care that remember what i said earlier when i was whenever time i'm editing a video and i'm being too fastidious and i'm like ah oh, i gotta do it perfect i'm off by a quarter second or this and that i just i don't care i don't care i don't care that's what brings me down when i start caring about things and fussing about things and fretting about things um Pretty much acting like Mrs. VV and Beth does, because let's be honest, Beth, y you do. You, you fret a lot. You're a fret fret artist. You like to fret. And uh, I can. I can very easily go down that hole. So for me, to stay positive, I don't care. And it, that freedom of, you know what? If it's not going to kill me or hurt me or kill or hurt my family physically, I don't care. And gosh, that makes me feel so good. You know, oh, look, there's a person not wearing a mask at the store. Should I go approach them and say, hey, idiot, wear a mask, try to protect the world? Well, I would, but I don't care in the fact that you're not going to fix stupid. What you can do is stay away from that person. All the knowledge is out there. All the, they know, they know, they all know. You're not going to fix it. And uh, once I just, just stay away from that person and don't care, uh, that helps. That helps. It helps a lot. Um, name a happy memory. I would dare say, um, growing up, my dad being an alcoholic, I didn't have a lot of time I spent with him. If I wasn't at school, I was home alone because my mom worked second shift. <clears throat> my dad was usually at the bar. And so when he and his friends decided to go to Pontiac, Michigan to a Detroit Lions game, which I knew there was going to be a bunch of drunk driving and probably my life was at risk and it wasn't a smart idea, but they uh, invited me along. They spent the money on the ticket and said, we're going to have this, you know, 12 year old kid annoyingly come along to this adult trip. But you know what? I love the Detroit Lions so much. And, <clears throat> and the fact that they invited me to go to that football game that, and I went and saw that and I was at the silver dome before they tore it down. And they did that for like three years. And I saw three different Lions games in person. And uh, I didn't go out much when I was a kid. That's why I don't much now. I never had a pattern I was taught of going places. I was trained to just stay in my room and do nothing day after day after day. If it wasn't me going to work or me going to school, that's just the way I am. And it was trained that way. But I have really, really happy memories of 
the few times I went out and about and I went to a Lions game. And uh, that's why I love the Lions now. No matter how bad they play, I will always be a fan just because it brings up happy nostalgia just seeing that logo and that helmet. Number nine, what motivates me? Um, nothing. Um, Self-pride, maybe. People at work ask me that all the time. It's like, hey, Steve, you do this and this and that, which is totally unnecessary. Uh, why do you do that? And I do it because it makes me feel good about me. I, I you know, I do what I need to do that my job has, but at the same point, um, they, they have contests, and they're like, oh, the winner of those contests gets this gift card or gets a little bonus on their check. And when I win the contest, I'm like, they're like, hey, you won. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, what? And I'm like, I don't care. I don't. None of those those little carrots at the end of the hooks ever have motivated me. And I feel sad that the people are lazy and don't do their jobs or are half-assed all the time until there's like this contest where they can win money. Now they're actually trying hard. So I take pride in myself that I'm going to give it my all every single day. And then when my numbers come out and when my job production shows that I'm better than everybody else and I can just, you know, shit talk them uh, and give them crap, that's where I, I feel good about it is if I can do that. Wow. Good morning. Anyway. Yeah, so that's me. Uh, that's what motivates me is just self-pride and being able to be on top so I can shit-talk people who didn't put the effort in. Because there's a lot of that entitlement nowadays. People just expecting things to be handed to them and not putting in the effort. And then if they do put in the effort, it's only because they're trying to achieve a regular or goal. And if they don't get that goal, then they're not going to try. Um, man, you know, that kind of entitlement pisses me off. So, yeah, being able to just lead by example that, hey, man, give it your balls out every day you know that's good that's good and the last question is do you know you're awesome <clears throat> well the word awesome means to instill the feeling in awe and i i i don't think i install the feeling of awe in anybody uh, i have times where i've made people go oh now that's different that's a w not a w e um so I don't feel as though I'm awesome, but I do think that I am a valid, productive member of society and that uh, I try to be a good friend to my friends. I try to care for others who care. And then the ones that are pretty much just rotten and evil on the inside, I try my best to ignore them like they don't exist. And uh, that keeps me happy. And uh, give my all to my friends, give my all to my job, and just be the best person that I can be. And I take pride in that. So... If you think that's awesome, well, great. You're awesome. So, no. Do I know that I'm awesome? Not necessarily, but I know you are. How do I know you're awesome? Because if you look at me and listen to me, and you're a person that puts up with me and who I am, that's pretty awesome. That installs awe into me and to you. And so the fact that you're actually listening this far into the stupid podcast, that's pretty freaking awesome. So there we go. Um... This does have something to do, uh, this Positivity Challenge was created by Terry at Light and Love 73. I'm not familiar with them, but I am going to now, thanks to uh, Beth. And uh, take care. Um, if you actually want me to do like a real podcast that's like, you know, has jokes in it that I've spent some time on, got interesting things, and, and just an auditorial thing, let me know down there. I, I could do that and be just as funny as... Uh, but I'm like, why would I do a podcast if I can add visuals to it and do editing? It's just like a, you know, podcast with bonus features. So that's why I don't. Hopefully, did you hear that on camera? That was a fart. You probably heard that. Eh, maybe not. Anyway, take care. We are at 19 minutes. That's long enough. I have a feeling at this point, Mrs. Vivi's not the only one snoring away sleeping. So take care. Peace out. And remember, all vinyl lives matter.